Well, a couple of news pieces on the housing front. The Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions says that it will maintain the minimum qualifying rate for uninsured residential mortgages. So this is the stress test for uninsured residential mortgages. OSFI says the qualifying rate will remain the greater of five and a quarter percent or the mortgage contract rate plus 2%. The agency says holding the minimum qualifying rate at this current level will help ensure that lenders and borrowers effectively manage the risks associated with residential mortgages. OSFI also adds that it is confident that the rate under its current formulation will lead to lower mortgage delinquency and default rates. Meanwhile, Ottawa is planning to launch a catalog of pre-approved home designs to speed up the home building process. Housing Minister Sean Fraser says the federal government will begin consultations to develop the catalog early next year. Fraser says this brings back a policy from the post-Second World War era when Canada Mortgage and Housing developed blueprints to speed up the construction of homes. Meanwhile, with Canadians facing a mortgage crunch and crisis in housing supply, affordability is a big focus, of course. And our next guest thinks that with listings on an upward trajectory in this country, strong population growth and a relatively tight labour market, the housing market activity will continue to deteriorate and won't rebound until early to mid-2025. To make sense of it all for us, let's bring in Benjamin Tal, Deputy Chief Economist, Economist with CIBC. Benjamin, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So I want to get to your outlook for the housing market, but I also wanted to just get your reaction to the federal government announcing these consultations to start next year, but to develop plans for um, pre-approved designs for homes. How much of an impact do you think that could have? I think it's going to be significant. It's not the only solution, of course, but it's the step in the right direction. Listen, we don't have one solution. There are many, many things that we have to do in order to at least try to deal with the affordability crisis that we are facing. This is a step in the right direction. It will st speed up the process, but we have to remember that the number one issue with the speed is not the design. It's really municipalities approving zoning. That's not something that they're tackling at this point. Nevertheless, we'll take it. That's a very good step in the right direction, and it definitely will save time. Okay, so let's get to your, your broader outlook, Benjamin. Um, you know, with where we are at right now, sales have really slowed down. Listings are starting to pick up. How do you see that, you know, evolving over the next year or so? Yes, I think that, and I'm not saying it lightly, that uh, the housing market today in Canada is in the recessionary territory, basically facing the biggest uh, test since the 91 recession. There is no question about it. It's not a 91 scenario by any stretch of the imagination, but it's the biggest test since then. Now, it means that the sales are down. They are down by more than 40% since the peak. They are still down about 10, 15% since 2019 level. So it's a very weak market, especially in the condo space. At the same time, until now, what was protecting prices was the fact that there was no listing. Nobody was listing. All of a sudden, people woke up. One of the reasons is that people have to reset their mortgage and they cannot do it because of the increase in the distress test, the increase in interest rates, and they are selling. That's distressed test sales that are adding to the supply. Clearly in the condo space, we see it more and more coming from investors. So you have more supply, less demand. This is becoming a buyer's market. A buyer's market with no buyers. That's more or less where we are. And that's the situation that we are facing. So this is a market that is slowing down. And by the way, this is a very healthy process. We have to remember that prices went up by 45% over the course of breakfast during COVID. So what we are seeing now is a very healthy correction, although clearly if you are in it, you don't like it. Yeah, I mean, that's really interesting, the buyer's market, but no, no buyers or few buyers right now, Benjamin. Um, on the investor side of things, uh, we do have one of your graphs from your outlook that looks at the share of newly completed condos that are cash flow negative uh, in the greater Toronto area. And that's been increasing over the past couple of years. You talked about investors, you know, wanting to sell at this point and that having a, a pretty a big influence you think on the supply side in terms of the the listings out there 
Yes, that's one of the reasons why I'm not extremely bullish on the condo space over the next uh, few months, because we see investors first not investing, and uh, second, uh, starting to sell, especially investors with uh, multiple units. And we have to remember that many of them are highly leveraged, and they simply cannot afford it anymore. So that's exactly what's happening. At the same time, if you look at the uh, condos under construction, the, the number is still rising by 7 8%. So we have supply coming. That's a supply that started two years ago, not now. And the, the demand is going down. So that's a surefire recipe for some slowing in the condo space. And that's exactly what we are seeing. We have to remember that the pre-sale market, namely what will be in two years from now, three years from now, is basically dead. We don't see developers coming up with new products because they simply cannot sell. What they used to sell over the course of uh, one or two weeks, now they're selling over the course of two or three months. So it takes much longer to sell, so they're not starting, which means that two years from now, when interest rates are already low, demand is there because demand is always there. The supply of new units will not be there. You don't have to be an economist to guess what will happen. Yeah, we, we, we do have another graph of yours that shows the uh, dwellings under construction. And you can see uh, the uh, condo um, component it has held steadier, at least up until this point, uh, Benjamin, um, uh, in comparison to, to the single family. When you're thinking about condo prices then that is tricky so do you think that they'll come down in the short term but maybe the medium term if we don't see construction continue at these sorts of levels and you know interest rates go down and demand goes up then will that be short lived do you think Yes, I think that if everything that we are seeing in the housing market now, every the slowdown that we are seeing, it's not a correction, it's an adjustment. It's a very healthy adjustment given what happened during COVID. We're still not even close to closing the gap between what we have seen the, in COVID and what we're seeing now during the slowdown. This is a pause. This is a very healthy adjustment. This is, the not, this is not the long-term trajectory by any stretch of the imagination. We know what happens. Population is rising very quickly. Demand is rising. Supply is not there. Affordability will become an issue again and again and again until we increase supply in a very significant way. And that's why the focus of governments now on supply is very healthy, but it's not enough. We need also to focus on demand, especially when it comes to foreign students.